Hello and welcome to another video. Obviously we're doing a bit of e-biking and camping. So spotting the elephant in the room is the brand new Carrera Vengeance. I've only had it a week. Um, I have had this, the same bike in the past about two years ago and a lot has changed on this current model. This is the 2021 uh, model. It's only a week old so uh, there we go. I've tried to keep the gear as light as possible, so I've got tons of new stuff, new tents, um, and all that kind of thing. As you can see, the tent's mounted here on the front. Uh, so, it's raining on and off, so I'm going to get the tent whacked up, and then uh, at least I've got somewhere I can keep stuff drying. Right, so the way the tent is mounted onto the front of the bike, dead easy. Two little clips here. There's the tent. We can do this back up. Cinch it all down and it's all out of the way. Uh, I will be leaving links to all the stuff that I've bought um, so you can check that out guys in the uh, description box below. Right so the first thing it's screaming quality to me because look at that they even give you that I've never seen that on a tent before that's a really nice touch that is one of them uh, clip buckles I've not even opened this up, so I don't know if everyone's here, but obviously it looks like tents. feels like I need to put the guy lines on it. Pegs. I think the pegs might be a bit rubbish, so I might replace them. Yeah, they're the type that I don't like, but let's, uh, let's get it up. So one thing that drew me to this tent was the uh, weight for a starters, which is uh, two kilos, I think. And the fact that it's got aluminium poles, better than them nasty, uh, nasty fiberglass jobs. I mean, the fiberglasses are all right, but it just adds weight. So let's uh, clip all this together. And it's, it's dead simple to put up as well, this tent. Um, that's what I wanted, simplicity as well. Nothing, nothing too uh, major like. Um, we want something that will go up in an instant, basically. So once you've done that bit, you can actually pick it up, move the tent to where you want it, stick it back down. Right, on with the fly sheet. Right, so the fly sheet has, are they toggle systems? Well, it has some ties there, and it has a toggle system there. I'm not quite sure. Oh, that's for the doors, the toggle system. Right, okay. So all we've got to do is tie these off in here. That'll do. So it just clips into the bottom here. I'll leave it all loose till I've got it all done, all the way around. And it started raining again. So the pegs that come with the tent are these aluminium type. I'm not a great fan of these. I, When you drive them into the ground with your palm of your hand, I mean, they're okay, they're lightweight, but I'll probably swap them out for some, you know, normal rounded top pegs, aluminium ones, or my Polish Levy ones, because I love the Polish Levy pegs. So yeah, you get plenty of pegs. I've not put the guide ropes on, because uh, what's the point? I'm in woodland, it's not going to blow a gale, although we are expecting a storm tonight. Um, it's raining now, as you can hear. So that's going to test the waterproofing out, at least. Right, yeah, so I'm really, uh, really happy with the tent. You get two doors, one either side. Um, and we get two stowage pockets, which are made out of mesh, just down in the corner. Um, one this side, one the other side behind the camera. I'm actually quite impressed with the quality of it. You know, it's, uh, 
obviously we've got this huge meshing area here to help with ventilation that's brilliant I like the ground sheet it's not one of them kind of plastic ones it is uh, it is like a material waterproof material uh, like I said it's a 3000 hydrostatic head um, four season apparently so yeah we'll see how it uh, goes once the doors are down uh, the internal doors you've got a little bit of a storage area um, just outside near the main doors could you get a rucksack in there probably just about this is a 40 litre one that might just fit down there right that's me waffling already in it right uh, what else was I thinking about torches right now I've obviously got a lamp on the camera so for this big trip that I'm doing I could get away with just using the lamp that's on the camera, bring some spare batteries. I could use this Petzl torch, uh, Petzl Tika, lovely little torch, whack it on your head, and you've got hands free, haven't you? Um, some people may be wondering, well, why don't I just use the torch that's on the bike? The problem with that is it's a Cat Eye 400, and the settings on it, once you've got it on high mode, it lasts for two hours. Setting below that lasts for four hours. Setting below that, which is a, a light and a strobe, lasts for six hours. And then just strobe lasts for about 20 hours. So, two weeks, if I'm cycling at night as well, or, you know, it's going to put a drain on that torch. So, I'm going to force multiply, as it's called, and take an extra torch. So, I think it'll be this one that I choose anyway. Uh, not sure about the pannier system on the bike at the moment. Uh, there's not a lot of weight in there at all, but um, something's just not sitting comfortable with me, so I may use my 70 litre French Army um, rucksack to put everything else in. Like I say, the tent's on the front of the bike, I'm not bothered about that, that's fine. Whether it goes back into that dry bag or not, I don't know. Uh, the tent, actually, I don't know if I've mentioned it, is uh, FE uh, Active, it's called. Um, four season, allegedly, two person. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually quite impressed with the, the build quality, it's, uh, you know, it's, it is a quality kind of tent, so yeah, I am liking it, and I like the, look, the fact that they've got the logos everywhere as well, but uh, I'll tell you more about this tent when I actually do a proper review. Right, I need to get some more gear out, so uh, let's stop waffling. Okay, so for the sleep system, I've gone with Trekology, a Luft UL50 uh, ultralight sleeping mat. Designed in Portland, Oregon, made in China. And for a little bit of comfort, I've gone for the Aloof Pillow 2.0, also by Trichology. I have had these kind of mats in the past. I used it twice, it burst. So we'll see how we get on with this one. I actually bought um, an electric air pump for this as well, but it didn't arrive in time for this, for this little camp I'm doing. So today I'm gonna have to do it by mouth. They say 10 to 15 breaths should be able to pump it up, so we'll see how we get on. So there it is all blown up, diamond configuration air pockets, and yeah, 16 breaths it took. Now for the pillow. Right, so that's the pillow blown up, didn't take very long at all, comes with its own bag. Um, Non-return non valve there, I think it's when you want to empty it, you just click that in. Um, and it comes with this kind of uh, strap which does, I've just noticed, unbutton. So that's fantastic. So the idea behind that is basically you just whap it around your sleeping mat and that's not going to move in the night. And the final thing is my sleeping bag. So this one is my Gellert uh, Hebog Classic 200 envelope sleeping bag. Absolutely fantastic. Bought it for seven quid from Go Outdoors when they're the sale on. Brilliant for summertime camping, which is what I'm doing. We're in we're in July now, so uh, yeah, it's that's ample. I'm a hot sleeper anyway, so I'm, I'm going to be fine in this. So one thing you can do if you're on a little bit of an incline like I am tonight, is put that whole sleeping system, the the mat and the pillow, directly in your sleeping bag. Um, I've done that on many occasions and it does work, it stops stops everything because we all know that camping equipment is made out of slippy stuff usually, um, so to save you sliding off your mat in the middle of the night, put it inside and if you're going to slide, your sleeping bag will go with you. So one thing you do need for your e-bike is a decent uh, lock and chain system, I've gone with this wire one, 
if someone was to use bolt cutters or a hacksaw on this it'd be very difficult to get through and also I've got a good quality uh, bike lock as well so I'm just going to chain the bike to this tree so the way I chain my bike up is go through this triangle at the back through the whole wheel so then once it's secured the bike wheel is attached to the bike so I'm just going to go around the back of there now I bought this really long wire so that I can go through the front wheel as well if I cho chose to and then decent quality lock that's all secure now now we're going to arm the uh, the bike wait for the bleep so it's armed now so if anybody even tries to move it's going to give you a little warning first and then it takes me to reset the system Okay, so I've got a few friends in the tent with me, a few bugs, flies, I have got the door open so that's not helping things, uh, but there's none inside the tent, so they're between the outer and the inner tent, and uh, maybe I should start charging these guys rent. So usually I start cooking about this time, it's about 8 o'clock at night now, um, but with my big Derbyshire two week camp um, I'm thinking I don't actually need to take a stove with me, I may take the um, Bushcraft Essentials stove with me with a couple of hexamine blocks, but uh, for today we've got um, just stuff that doesn't need heating, so got a chicken Caesar salad wrap, uh, cheddar, cheddar cheese and onion slice, we've got a um, chicken on a stick, some baby bells who doesn't like a little bit of cheese and a nice Welsh pork pie. On top it off we've got some uh, Galaxy drink here. So I'm thinking behind this big bike trip I've got planned is I don't really need to take a cooking system with me because you don't really need hot food all the time. I've got a nice selection of food just down there. There will be restaurants, there'll be takeaways, there'll be pubs, there'll be all that kind of stuff. So I can get food, even from the supermarket, so it's not a big issue. On the back of the bike I've got a flask, so if I put cold water in it, it remains cold. If I put hot drink in it, it remains hot. So it's it's uh, got two purposes. So yeah, um, about food, it's all about the intake of calories if you're cycling, so uh, yeah. I, I probably won't even eat this half of this lot down here. Right, so I lied. I ate the lot. Obviously, when I buy stuff, always get a carrier bag. That's on my waist in there. And uh, I'm having my Galaxy drink now. It's very nice.
Right, so that's me all packed away. Um, tent, no issues with the tent. A little bit of condensation, but uh, you expect a little bit of that in the morning. Um, the sleeping mat and the pillow both work great. Didn't go down in the night, so I'm, I'm pleased with them. Um, the pannier set, <coughs> excuse me, the pannier set I may not take to Derbyshire with me. I may just throw everything in a, in a rucksack. Um, so I've got a little bit of a cycle home now. Uh, on the way here, I did come up a nine degree gradient hill and I tested out the, the walk mode, which I was quite impressed with. It's, uh, it's not walking, you're, you're proper, you know, proper striding with it to keep up with the bike. The bike does three to four miles an hour. Um, but when I do the review on the bike, I'll show you how to use the walk button and all the settings and go through everything on that video. Right guys, uh, all that remains to be said is thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave some comments and I'll see you all on the next one. Thanks for watching.